Welcome to NAS this week. You can follow, share, and subscribe to our social media handles at Eco Hall Blog and TV. My name is Comfort Olayinka. President Bola Ahmed Tinubu on Wednesday made his first budget presentation before a joint session of the National Assembly. The 2024 budget is tagged the renewed whole budget. Addressing the joint session of the National Assembly, President Tinubu unveiled a budget estimate of 2.53 naira for the year 2024. Of our budget performance, Government will focus on ensuring value for money, greater transparency and accountability. In this regard, we will work with more closely with development partners and the private sector to address long-standing issues in education. A more sustainable model of funding tertiary education will be implemented, including the student loan scheme planned to become operational by January 2024. <laughs> A stable macroeconomic environment is important to catalyze private investment and accelerate economic growth. We are and shall continue to implement business and investment friendly measures to sustainable growth. We expect the economy to grow by a minimum of 3.76% above the forecasted world average. Inflation is expected to moderate to 21.5%. In 2024. In preparing the 2024 budget, our primary objective has been to sustain our robust foundation for sustainable economic development. A critical focus of this budget and the medium term expenditure framework is Nigeria's commitment to greener future. On Thursday, Honorable Julius Inhoveri and Honorable Ibrahim Isiaka moved for the need to investigate gaps and loss of opportunities in the maritime sector, noting the maritime sector is crucial for the Nigerian economy's survival with underutilized seaports. The House of Representatives commenced budget debate on Friday. Let's take a look. The mover of this, you know, presentation. I also want to say that the budget highlights the need for public-private partnership for, you know, high capital infrastructure. And this is a budget that also recognizes that revenue optimization and expenditure efficiency is very critical. This was where the budget presentation spoke to value for money, transparency, and accountability. I don't want to say everything because I know that a lot of my colleagues will also contribute to other aspects of the budget. But I want to summarize by saying, Mr. Speaker, respected colleagues, that we all should play our role, play our part as the people's representatives. Because this hallowed chamber is Nigeria. We all represent all the communities all over the country. This is where Nigeria resides. The nation looks up to us. It is a collective responsibility. And we also want to implore Nigerians that government cannot do it alone. We cannot do it alone. We need all Nigerians to support implementation of budgets, supervised implementation of budgets in their various constituencies. This job rich economy growth meant is to focus more on skill acquisitions and vocational you know, training. And I think that in that regards, we need to talk to institutions like ITF, set up for, you know, to, 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 you know, to fund skills. What is happening to some of these funds? Finally, is the situation in our border towns. I've said it more than twice or thrice on this floor, that part of the country that suffers most in terms of infrastructure development are our border towns. And as we speak, my colleagues, you know, Mr. Speaker, despite the fact that um, you know, they have removed the subsidy 
Based on the fact that we are all enjoying this, you know, subsidy now to some extent with enhanced revenue and all of that, the petroleum products in the border towns are still not reaching 20 kilometers to the, you know, you know, to the border. And people in those border towns are still paying exorbitantly, you know, for, you know, for petroleum products. As a parliament, we must consider steps on how to make sure that we as people, we patronize made in Nigeria products and reduce less dependence on imported goods. Stay tuned for our interview segment. Let's talk about the just presented budget by the President Bola Ahmed Tinubu. He, he was before the National Assembly on 5 trillion era. What is your own view about the budget? The budget is is a process that starts with the planning of what you really want to do. In, in the budget process, what you first do is, what are my programs? What and what do I want to do? Then you look at what amount I have. Possible, either what you have directly or indirectly. That means what you hand and what you might borrow to augment if need uh, be. So, you must first of all look at the program of the government and the, the mode or the ways in which he intends to make all the revenue that is also planning to get money from because it's very, very important. It's not just to have a very beautiful and appealing budget. You must look at the underlining factors. How realistic are these underlining factors? One, uh, the oil price is put at 70 7.96 dollars that's reali realistic with what we have uh, on ground the exchange rate is put at 750 the black market is over a thousand naira. that means it's realistic even many people are saying it should even be pushed up to close the gap between the official rate and the uh, the uh, uh, black market window so that is a realistic uh, uh, parameters. Look at oil production uh, quota. We are we are actually making we are pro we, we are proposing 1.78 uh, million barrels per day. And uh, although we are not making that much yet, we are not producing that much yet. But the the quota by OPEC is around that area. So if we can push ourselves. To ensure that we get 1.78 is going to increase the revenue of the country. So that will be able to at least ensure that you make up with the proposed amount we are putting in the, in the budget. So and we look at the growth rate, which is uh, about 3.76 as proposed. Yes, we have tendency of opportunity of making it because with, with the stoppage of um subsidy and the the closing of the the exchange rate and the parallel market in the, the, these opportunities of ensuring that more money comes into the hand of the federal government and now by next year we we are proposing which is almost certain now that dangote and the other refineries will come on stream that means Nigeria will be saving about $60 billion currently used to import refined products. Now, that will reduce the pressure on the Naira. Immediately, you start making that dollar. Because no matter what happens, Dan Gote and all the other refin uh, refineries will not sell to us in dollars. They will sell to us in Naira. Yes, I won't say it will be lower than what they are selling now. Probably a bit, a little lower. But that means Naira will now become more powerful. Because if you save $60 billion every year that you are spending to import, that will now be safe for other services. So that will now ensure that Naira, the country, the country will have enough dollar to meet up any other form of expenditure 
So that is going to be, very, be uh, create a very big opportunity. And apart from the petrol that will be produced, when refineries are now working, we'll be able to produce petrochemical, uh, improve our petrochemical industries. All the items that are on the petrochemical are so enormous. Plastics, uh, drugs, paints, many things. That will, even the fertilizer too. I also buy product of, uh, from the uh, crude, which, uh, which Dangote is already producing. So that means other, com other refineries too will now be producing their petrochemicals and fertilizers. That means we will no longer be importing petrochemicals and fertilizers. Apart from saving, saving about $60 billion used to, to bring in uh, refined uh, petroleum products, fertilizers and petrochemicals too will not be saved. We will not be able to even export some of these fertilizers and petrochemicals. Instead of spending dollars, now we'll be earning dollars. We will we'll, we'll now become a net earner of dollar rather than a, a net uh, buyer that we used to be. So these are opportunities that will now increase domestic uh, production in, any, in other fields. Because by the time you, you are now getting your petrochemical directly, that means all the uh, companies like Eleganza, all these ones doing plastic products, chairs and all these other companies will now be buying from our refineries. That means most of those companies running out of Nigeria will need to run back or indigenous companies taking over some of this uh, production. It's when you're able to now grow your production, that means the, the 3.6 proposed growth in the GDP will now become very, very realistic if we do not even surpass it. Because Nigeria has a lot of potential, but you need to be very aggressive in some of, the, of the, your, your uh, parameters you put on ground. You know, we have not even started talking about even the figure of the budget. We are talking about things that will lead to the realistic budget. Now, looking about the 27.5 trillion naira, we can say it's just about the size of last year's budget. Because the real value is to uh, remove the effect of the increase in the dollar rate. By the time you do that, at least some few, as at last year, Dollar was selling for around 800, I mean 400 naira officially. So if today it's selling for about 750, that means almost 100 percent. So if you now look at 50 percent of the 27 uh, trillion naira budget, it will also give you about 14, 15 trillion that we also budgeted last uh, last year. But one of the major advantages in what we have now is that our our, our loan, the loan, I think the loan uh, component of this uh, budget is just about eight point something trillion naira. And also the servicing uh, recurrent. But because of this debt servicing, this is not uh, visible uh, for now. So, so in all, we can say yes, we have a, a budget that gives hope to a country, a budget that you can feel, that you can see operate, operationally that yes, this thing can work. Because it's not just the reading of the budget alone, because it has the, the, the tentacles and the, of, uh, that can attract, to, to, I mean, it has all those things that will ensure that these things are visible. The indices are there. Like, uh, like I mentioned, the price, the oil price, the exchange rate, the production quota that we are, we are targeting, all these things are the things that will make it visible at the end of the day. So it's, it's something that I, I believe that within the next few years, Nigeria will gladly and easily get out of the, the economic issues that we'll be facing. And lastly, the emphasis on electricity too is going to help the economy because the engine room of production is electricity power and this government is facing it headlong to ensure that yes we in the next few years power becomes something that will be very very stable 
in Nigeria and be available to the sectors really required, especially in the area of production. And if, you, if you, production is very easy, it becomes cheaper. That means prices will go down. So the, this is a very realistic uh, budget. Now the Senate. On Tuesday, President Bola Ahmed Tinubu informed the Senate of his intention to present the 2024 appropriation bill to a joint session of the National Assembly on Wednesday, November 29 by 11 a.m. Meanwhile, President Bola Tinubu is also asking the Senate to consider and approve 169, 569 and 11 million euro eternal borrowing plan to ensure gross implementation of some projects in the country. I crave the indulgence of the Senate to grant me the slot of 1100 hours on Wednesday, the 29th day of November 2023, to formally present the 2024 appropriation bill to a joint session of the National Assembly. While I look forward to addressing the joint session, please accept distinguished Senate President and distinguished Senators the assurances of my highest regards. Signed, President Bola Ahmed Tunibu. So tomorrow, Wednesday, we will have our sitting earlier and then we will join Mr. President by 11 a.m. Distinguished Senate President, Request for approval of the federal government 2022 to 2024 external borrowing ruling plan. I write in reference to the above subject and to submit the attached federal government 2022 to 2024 external borrowing ruling plan for consideration and early approval of the National Assembly to ensure prompt implementation of the projects. Plenary on Thursday is set aside for deliberation on the second reading of the appropriation bill. The senators for hours discussed the modalities of the budgets. Leading debate on general principles of the budget, Senate Majority Leader Okoyemi Bamidele said the proposal is intended to further place the country's economy on the path of inclusive and sustainable economic development. Mr. President, distinguished colleagues, to finance the deficit, therefore, is to engage in new borrowing totaling 7.83 trillion naira, 294.49 billion naira from privatization proceeds and 1.06 trillion naira drawdowns on bilateral and multilateral loans secured for specific development projects and programs. Although there is a growing concern over continued borrowing, but this administration resorts to it to finance fiscal gaps. But let me state here that the debt level of the federal government is still within sustainable limits. Very importantly, these loans are used to finance critical development projects and programs aimed at improving our economic environment and ensuring effective delivery of public services to our people. We focused on the completion of major road and rail projects. We've come to the end of NAS this week. Join us same time next week. Bye for now.